Faith is a powerful thing. When I look at the Quran these days, I'm amazed at how I didn't see the glaring flaws, irrational narratives, contradictory beliefs and just plain ridiculous nonsense that I can see now. One example is the strange story of the cow in Surat al-Baqarah. The story goes like this. Once upon a time, the children of Israel found a murdered man and started arguing about who killed him. So God decided to show them the truth of what happened. But for a wisdom only known to him, most high is he, he decided that he would do it in a very strange way, and so told Moses to tell the children of Israel that God has commanded them to sacrifice a cow. The children of Israel asked, what sort of cow? So Moses asked God, and God told him that the cow shouldn't be too old or too young, but middle-aged. Then the children of Israel asked, what colour should it be? So Moses asked God again, and he said that it should be a fawn-coloured cow, pure and rich in tone, that looks really nice. So the children of Israel asked, Could God be, please be a bit more specific? Cows look all the same to us. So Moses picked up his hotline again and says, God says it should be a cow that doesn't work in fields and doesn't have blemishes. Eventually the children of Israel did what God had told them and sacrificed the cow. Then God told them to hit the dead body with a piece of the sacrificed cow. In case you missed that, I'll repeat it. God told them to hit the dead body with a piece of the sacrificed cow. The dead man then came back to life and pointed at the murderer. There he is, he did it. The end. There are so many questions that pop into my mind when I read this story that it really puzzles me why they never occurred to me when I was a Muslim. The only answer that I can come up with is that faith really does blind you to what is right in front of your nose. You see, the starting point for a believer is that the Quran is the word of God. And so it isn't read with a truly critical eye, but read with devotion, reverence and awe. It's an act of worship. Any questions or discussions raised by believers about stories like this are simply to explain the wondrous moral lessons or elaborate on its profound wisdoms. It's no wonder that believers are so scornful of doubt because doubt is essential to true critical thinking. Unless one is willing to seriously consider the possibility that this is not actually the perfectly composed words of an omniscient and omnipotent creator but rather the less perfectly composed words of a human mind, then one cannot truly examine it with an objective and critical mind. The first thing that strikes me about this story now is how silly it is. Why on earth do things in such a gruesomely bloody, irrational and downright absurd manner? Secondly, what's the point of this story? What lesson are we supposed to learn? Why take up the precious and limited space in God's eternal and last communication to mankind with this nonsense. According to Ibn Kathir, it was to teach the Bani Israel that whoever committed murder for the purpose of gaining inheritance was not allowed to inherit. If that's true, then perhaps a subtitle for the Quran is Lessons in the Bloody Obvious. Or is it just one more reminder at how disobedient those naughty Jews were and how many times God favoured them and blessed them, time and time again. Which of course only prompts the question, why the hell did he choose them then? Or perhaps God is teaching us the correct way of conducting murder inquiries. Scotland Yard should equip every policeman with a piece of sacrificed cow, just in case he is faced with a puzzling murder. It would certainly save on court cases. And where is the wonderful eloquence and clarity that the Qur'an constantly boasts of? Please do read the actual verses, whether in Arabic or English, and tell me, honestly, if you find them both eloquent and clear. And more than all of this, is why was God so chatty back then? Constantly intervening, meddling, and ordering his faithful to worship, sacrifice, and of course slaughter in his name. But once man emerged from a time of superstition and ignorance and is able to scientifically record and investigate such miracles, God suddenly doesn't want to talk to anyone anymore. Finally, 
When I read these verses now, all I hear is the voice of Muhammad, desperately trying to win over the Arab Jews of the Hejaz by making it appear as if he is speaking on behalf of their God, the one they already believe in. And this story is clearly a muddled version of a similar story in the Old Testament.